Good morning. I'm your friend Scotty Ray along with Odie. It is Thursday, as I figured out a minute ago, as I got my days mixed up in my head. The Some day days, after hump day. The day after hump day. I'll remember that. <laughs> already, what, uh, April the 18th? May is not that far off. I'm already seeing it in the forecast. And when you talk about May, I, and this took me off guard. Graduation is like, ooh, here for so many kids. It is pretty close to it. It Golly. is. I hope they learn something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Most of them, I think, just got pushed out. <laughs> we don't want you back in here. Here, Go ahead and graduate. Walk Tighten down Tighten your man bun and walk the stage. <laughs> man bun. <laughs> I'll never get used to that. I, I'm sorry. I know that there's a few of you out there that wear those, and, well, it's not for me. Tell the truth. You and Greg both want one. You just can't grow enough hair. <laughs> He's starting early. We're going to get him. <laughs> a big show lined up this morning. We'll find out what's going on in Long Creek also. We're, we've got him, the man without a gun. Yeah, oh, now he got one. <laughs> or, okay, the man without a badge. Let there me we go. Look that. at there. They've taken it away. He's giving it up. Yeah. Todd Kemp's going to be in with us here in just a moment. What is life after toting that for so many years, being the man in charge, and then one day you wake up and no one's calling you? Yeah, that's uh... – we're going to find out if he still has to listen to the radio or if he's gotten used to the quietness at the middle of the night. Yeah, I yeah. bet you do sleep more at night when it comes to that. Yeah. wee Another big thing that is happening is Kemper Academy is getting ready for, well, it's a four-day event. I thought it was just a day, but, boy, I learned something. Four days in a row as we go to Kemper Academy, and Miss Miles, Kristen is here. How in the world are you doing this morning? Doing great. How are you? Car show? Did I hear right? Oh, you did. That's on Saturday. Now, y'all have never had a car show before. No. This is our first annual uh, Kemper County Ram Jam. Um, it's over four days. Um, Saturday is going to be our big event. It's going to be a car show. Um, praying that the rain stays away. And um, we'll have um, just, just a lot of fun. Um, starts out tonight, though. We're having our beauty pageant. There you um, go, Odie. <laughs> You want me to put on my high heel shoes? <laughs> well, I know y'all, and the reason I said that is I know that Kemper Academy has done those womanless beauty pageants yes, before. Yes, we have. We have. And they're funny. They are. They're a lot of fun. Uh, this one is a real one. Um, we've got over 50 <laughs> contestants. Um, uh, the girls from the school. Um, got, I think, about four guys that are going to be in there escorting. Um, it starts tonight at 6, and then we're going on to Friday night. We're going to um, have our drama club presentation of Oz. Okay. That starts out at uh, 6. But starting at 5, we're going to have pork plates. We're going to have um, pork plates, barbecue, uh, baked beans, potato salad, bread, and a drink for $10. And then we're going to have a, or you can get a barbecue sandwich and mm. chips and a drink for 5 well, For I like eight, barbecue, I'm sorry. Well, period. That's not bad at all. Right. Now, barbecue's kind of my favorite there. Yeah. yeah. So, and then um, we'll go on to... Um, the ribbon cutting for our new multi-purpose facility for our athletics. It's a batting cage, uh, weight room, that type thing. That's going to be five thirty. We did. We desperately needed it. Um, so we're excited about that. Going to have the ribbon cutting for that at five thirty. Like I said, six o'clock is the drama club, and then immediately following that, we're going to have an art show for the kids. That um, the elementary kids art uh, is going to be on display and even for sale to raise money for our art uh, program. And then we're also going to have, we're really excited about, uh, Chris Gully has gotten this together for the, from the FCA. We're going to have a monster truck. It's called the Rise. Oh. And I, had you heard of that, Odie? I, I had not. I hadn't either. Big truck, though? Like, yeah, it's a big jacked yeah. up truck. It's called the Rise. They come in Friday night. We're just going to take pictures with Rowdy the Ram. Um, and we're going to let them take pictures Friday night. But then Saturday, he's coming back, and they're actually going to take rides. So with Rowdy and them, and then get their picture made. And then after the ride, they actually get to sign the truck. They're, they've got panels up under the bottom of the truck, and they get to sign the truck or either 
put their favorite Bible verse on it. So okay. it's really a cool deal. It's a ministry, like I said, out of Jasper, Alabama. So if you're wanting to, to enter your car, how do you go about that? Do you have to pre-sign up or just show up the day we of? We have both. Or we can, uh, at 9 o'clock's registration on Saturday. Um, it's $25 to enter. And we'll be there at 9. The car shows from 10 to 2 on Saturday. Okay. Well, we'll send yeah. them. Is there a number to call? Yes. Kipper Academy. You can call my number uh -oh. for the car show. 601-917-4120. Um, we're also going to have bounce house, slide, and everything Saturday for the kids. Concessions are available. The yeah. Mr. Club's got concessions on Saturday. Um, and then Saturday night, we're um, going to have our spring musical. It's a full gospel musical that Chris has gotten together with elementary kids. Um, that'll be at 6 o'clock. And then we're going to have Mando's Food Truck, Kona Ice, and Domino's Pizzas. I don't think they've mm. left anything out. No. no was everything Let me going tell you, on. we have worked hard on this. We really have. Um, and then the main thing for the kids is we're going to have a Duncan booth with our head of school, Miss Mary Ellen Waters, will be right. one of the ones. Um, our head basketball and football coach, Coach Kilpatrick, will be another one. Um, our high school cheer, cheer coach, Miss Anna Hemphill. And then our PE coach, Mr. Tim Gibbs. They're all up for getting in the Duncan booth. There. Yeah, so. not bad at all. So, yeah. come and join Seth Kemper Academy is right. a place to be. It all begins here. And Saturday is going to be the car show, and then right. we'll bring in the the big four wheel drive. And right. again, give me the number, Kristen, of right. who we can call and how, how, what to do here. All right, it's six zero one nine one seven forty one twenty. There's one more part of it. It's Sunday night. We're going to have a free event for everybody. We're going to have hot dogs, potluck, wiffle ball, bonfire. Um, just everybody come out and have a good community event. Just bring a side side dish in your chair and we'll okay, be good to go. Okay, for, for everybody else and like me, what is wiffle ball? I, I don't well, know what that you know, is. I'm you don't not, know what wiffle ball is? I've never is? heard of it. I'm not 100% sure either, Scotty Ray. It's, um, a, it's a plastic ball that's yeah. got a bunch of holes all the way around it, and you got a big red bat or either a little skinny yellow bat. And what do you do with that? You Hit play it? baseball, but it, the ball doesn't go quite as far and all that. Wiffle you don't ball, play with okay. gloves. Okay. I'm yeah. going to be a spectator on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> Wiffle ball. But a big thank you is. for coming in this morning. Thank we you. appreciate it. Thank Kemper Academy, go see them this weekend as they'll have so much happening. I hope you'll enjoy yourself and, and go up and yeah. see that. Well, let's see here. A few things that have gone on in the, uh, the community. Uh, uh, Ward was kind of busy yesterday. They were passing out little, little I love you's yesterday. Was well, called they giving up. bracelets out again. They were. It was search warrant. And they went on in, oh. and well, let's let's just take a look here. What they got, Odie? What's this on the table? Oof. Mm. What is? What's the little the little bag? Is that cocaine? It could be. Because I, I, I don't. It's know. a powdery subject, so we're gonna go with that. That could be cocaine. Some of that other stuff looks like possibly crack. Uh. Mm -mm -mm. A little heroin, possibly. Let's see here. As we get into the thing here, trafficking methane, meth, possession of a firearm, trafficking cocaine. Yep, we were right. Fentanyl, Fentanyl. ecstasy, and oxycodone was involved in this. Mm -hmm. And what is this? Oh, my heavens, you shouldn't own. If you're a felon, you can't tote a gun. There's a law that says, now, you're how right. did it get by that law? That I don't know. That gun ought to be ashamed of itself for walking out there and jumping <laughs> in that fella's lap. <laughs> it did. He was arrested here. Uh, as we get this, is Timothy Cole that was arrested. And here's the uh, the picture that we got. Nice cameras down there also, we might say, at the Lauderdale County Show. Even tells you got a tape measure are. right there behind you. Yeah, it's amazing how it works there. There will be oh. more arrests. They, this will not stop at this. They continue to search and to take things like this off of the street. It's for our protection there. And a good job by the Lauderdale County Sheriff's Department. No one was injured in this as this went down. But that was a lot of drugs that were seized during a search. So a big thank you to uh, the men and women that went above and beyond to take that down. Yeah. It, uh, we had a, um, and I have never, as long as I've lived in Lauderdale County, never heard of Charlie Johnson Road. <laughs> I had to it's get out yonder. I had to get my phone. I said, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. Kept, I kept wanting to go to Russell. And it, it was not. That was the only yeah. Charlie Road I knew. There's a but Charlie this, Dunn out there. That's right. Near NAS Meridian, if you take a left by the old pizza building, you will find Charlie Road, Charlie Johnson Road. And we had an incident out there yesterday as we arrived. Yeah. 18 wheeler log truck on its side. That's not great as we go mm. to this. Look at this. This uh that 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 will give you a headache, Odie. Yes, it will. Oh. Ambulance on scene. Of course, minor injuries involved with this. Thank heavens, as we'll see the logs on the side of the road there. As we go to the sheriff's department, they came on out and 
done a little report there. But, boy, seeing an 18-wheeler upside down of what's underneath, it's kind of scary. It is. And then we, you've got a little creek that runs right there, and we were uh, having to make sure that none of the oil or diesel fuel or anything got off in that creek, which led to another The man uh, who walked creek. on logs. <laughs> You know that's that's uh you you have to take your time when you're walking on them logs because them suckers right there will slip and turn on you and the next thing you know uses under. <laughs> it's kind of like trying to do that on water where you paddle. Yeah, and especially those are some small logs, so it was like bouncy at the same time. Here's a rear view look at that of what went on yesterday, and again that was there on Charlie Johnson Road. Fortunately, it was a one vehicle accident; no one else was involved. And you yeah. know how things are. Once a vehicle leaves the edge of the road. It's hard to, and the bigger the vehicle, the harder it is. Yeah, especially when you're that heavy. Yeah. Uh, we've got video and all that. And now, let me explain this. I'm going to have you going to explain it because I was lost. I, I made a post last night. I got several calls of what's going on in Newton County. <laughs> so after examining, and I have got video to this, but I chose not to place the video. It uh, The Sheriff's Department was on the scene. There was a gentleman standing up next to the uh, the vehicle and a guy laying in the ditch. He wasn't moving. And I thought, man, this guy is, well, something happened to him. Yeah. Turns out, and I used the word he was resting. And uh, there's another word for it, I guess you could say, that he was not able to get himself back in the car. Oh. He, oh. Someone opened the door and he said, flop. So that's how he got down there. <laughs> yeah, he, w he was not able to get back up by himself as we look at this picture here. And that fellow told me, well, I can't pick him up. <laughs> he tried. He did try. I got the video to it. He did try to pick him up, but he flopped in the grass. They had run out of gas. It is passenger. <laughs> Next time, fill it up. <laughs> what, what, was, what was that song that, uh, what's the name done? What made old Milwaukee famous? <laughs> He's put me in the grass. Oh, yeah, he's laying down there. And that's what that was all about there. The sheriff's department stayed with him until someone brought them gas, and he got help getting his passenger back in the car to get him home. <laughs> hey, you always you have that. Idiot. We made Scotty Rakers of you. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd raise a lot of money if we had you in a Duncan bed. Oh, I don't want to do that. No, they'd come back to me. Well, you can't swim, but it's not the yay. I know, I'd still drown. Ask Angie. <laughs> She's got many a story about all of that. And the creek was only that deep. You know, I'm not making fun of anybody, but it, because I couldn't have done any better, but it sure is hilarious to try to watch somebody handle one person that has no movement and they're trying to get them back in a car. This oh, admit helping. it, we've all had that one friend at some point in time that you've had to help along the way. Took him back to his house, leaned him up against the door, and rang the doorbell and run. Dropped me uh, <laughs> yeah. inside the jukebox. So that's what that was about last night. A lot of comments on that. And coming up, we're also <laughs> going to tell you about the uh, the incident where, well, some employees just cannot work together. Uh-oh. Are you sure they wasn't just... <laughs> Just testing out some new equipment. <laughs> it may have been. <laughs> the comments, everybody was Kung Fu fighting. <laughs> that was the funniest. We'll tell you about that. Things happen. They really do. And sometimes coworkers just don't get along. And, and we let you know where it happens locally. That's right. It could be right in the middle of lunchtime and you serve food. Nobody gets food. Nothing to see here. Go eat. <laughs> Scotty Ray and Odie, we'll be right back. Summertime has arrived and Freeman Tractor on Highway 494 has the exact lawnmower for your need. If you've got a big yard with acres and acres to mow, they have a mower for that. No matter the size yard you have, Freeman Tractor has the lawnmower that fits you and your budget. From 48 inch all the way up to 60 are the Exmark lawnmower. Plenty of these to choose from. Also, they carry a complete line of LS tractors. Come by for a test drive today. Financing available. Drop in today to Freeman Tractor, Highway 494, see coleslaw or buttermilk. As the seasons change, so do your clothes, and Garrett Sports Center on 8th Street has exactly what you need. Haybo shirts, long and short sleeve, also hunk shirts, and America's favorite brand, Carhartt. Whether you need work pants or slacks for church, and nothing lasts like a pair of Carhartt overalls. Maybe it's a set of boots that you need. From box to lacrosse, they have the boot for you. And as hunting season rolls in, they have all the camouflage you need, and toboggans to boot. Garrett Sports Center, 3505 8th Street Meridian. Have you been wanting your own building, your own shed? Speak to our friends at Best Sadia Building, 601-728-1954. Now, they can custom build you a home from a barn dominium. Maybe it's a shed that you're needing or a simple place to park your car, a garage, a camp house. 
Maybe you need a place to park your tractor, your motorcycle, or even that lawnmower. They can custom design whatever it is you need. Quality work, trustworthy, best state of your buildings. Speak with Drew, 601-728-1954. Always have to hit that button to make us appear once we're, again. We're now. back. <laughs> As I mentioned yesterday, it, uh, I got a call that said, why are there so many police in North Hills? They were hungry. Yeah, so I had to go investigate. I thought it, you know, it was a bargain price on cheeseburgers or something, but it was not. It was some employees that couldn't get along with one another, and they might have been fighting amongst themselves. And so we went up and observed this, and then finally everything was calmed down. I don't, I don't think anybody was taken into custody or anything, but uh, it was, I analyzed kind of funny. You'll go home for a week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody got a cook. But it was a big argument there. That's what was going on. No one was hurt, but uh, that's what went on there. But the Kung Fu fighting line was really funny, whoever posted that. I, I, I give you the award for the funny comment of the day. That's right. That was- <laughs> we wanted to bring up uh, in um, the Townsend community in Kemper County, the boil water notice has been lifted, so you can go back and not have to boil your water any anymore there. Who's this you got sitting in here with us? We have got, he's still the high sheriff. Oh, yeah, always uh, will be. Just always will be, especially... Uh, when you serve the community for as long as uh, Mr. Todd Kemp. How many sheriff, years was it? Clark County. Todd? Well, I served 24 as sheriff and uh, all together about 38 and a half with the Clark County Sheriff's Office. That's, that's been a little while there. Put that microphone just a yeah. little bit closer to you all so right. we'll be able to make sure everybody just hears you. Just a little bit good. closer. So, what are you doing now? Well, I've done a lot of honeydews. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I about caught up on those because I've learned to uh, go to the store and, hang, the out store for an and hang out for a while. Go to Skidmore's or somewhere and hang out somewhere. You know. I don't blame you there. And, uh, but anyway, I have took a little old part-time job, something I never thought I'd be involved in, a lot of technical stuff. Drug ring or something big like that, the <laughs> syndicate? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going around visiting with the sheriffs in the state oh, of Mississippi, so I, I have traveled a lot in the state in the last four months. So, so are you selling something? What do you do? Yeah, I'm inmate communication. Am I prying too far here? No, inmate communications uh, stuff. Um, they got word, that's a technical word for that. Well, yeah. video visitation and all that stuff, and I did not realize it's a very competitive business. Is it? And, uh, <laughs> Uh, the boss man uh, got me involved in that. He asked me would I go around and be his PR guy, and I said, "Sure, I'll be glad to. I, I can run my mouth. I don't. I don't know a lot about uh, computers and stuff like that, but I can learn. So I'm not too old to learn. So it's been fun. Uh, I've got to see a lot of state of Mississippi that I've never seen before. I went through a town the other day called Jumper Town. Jumper, Jumper, Jumper Town. Town. I can only imagine how they got that. It's name. between Boonville and Ripley. That's up. <laughs> then there's another one. Give them folks a shout out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down. <laughs> For living there. <laughs> Kasuth. Huh. Kasuth, Mississippi. Kasuth. Yeah. That's up in Alcorn County. So uh, I went through a place called a few years ago. I was somewhere off 49. And I think the name of the town was Possum Town. Yeah, Possum Possum Town. Town. yeah, I'm pretty sure. That, that's peculiar. You'll get a kick out of this one because you're probably the only one in the room that'll know, but I went through Sledge, Mississippi yes, yesterday. Sir, really. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know exactly where that is. Yeah, I went through Sledge. Does he have family still there? I didn't see a whole lot of nothing in Sledge <laughs> yesterday. It, it wasn't even a store there. <laughs> And what we're talking about is a Mississippi cotton pick and Delta oh. town. That's where Charlie Pride uh, came That is from. correct. But back in the day, it was a sharecropper town. It was. Mm-hmm. And, and as you're saying now, it's... Did they even have a marker up says Charlie Pride? Yeah, there is a marker there. Uh, but there's no, I didn't even see a store there. Unless there was something off the main highway where I was at, but I didn't, I didn't recognize anything there. It's amazing how many years ago... And, yeah. and we've got yeah. areas of Clark County, as you will know, that once was thriving. They were. Then along came NAFTA, and, well, poof, it all went away. That's correct. Well, and then back around the turn of the century when the timber business got real big, like out at Crandall, close to where I live out there, Crandall was bigger than Quitman. Yeah. A uh, big sawmill town, and uh, at one time, Shibuta. There were three railroads run out of Shibuta one time. Did not know that. Yes, sir. Mm. Uh, so we, the timber business uh, was booming back 
from about 1900 up to the mid 40s. And you yeah. probably know more about this, maybe. But Stonewall was really bigger than Meridian, also at one time. Also, it was uh, barges. But see, Stonewall through. didn't come into existence until after the war, after the Civil War, in 1868. Um, gentlemen came in there and and put up a cotton mill. And, and that uh, brought everybody. And it brought you, all the old houses that you see along Highway 513 are all old mill houses, and they were for employees. So uh, at one time, it was a gated community. Didn't know that. Wow. Uh, if you go by the town hall, there's remnants of the old gate uh, by the ball field. Uh, the town has uh, put that old gate up there, and I think they've got a little marker out there. Seen so. it many times, but never crossed my mind. That but that it was, was a gated uh, community at one time. So when are you going to write a book about, because there's the stuff that you know that nobody else knows anymore, and you don't need that history to go away. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm getting ready to do that, uh, and I, I've got a lot of stuff in my mind that I need to, I need to put on paper, so I, I, I'm planning on doing Have that. Have you come up with a title for the book? No, I hadn't. You won't believe but this. <laughs> there's, so many, there's so many parts. You know, I've got sheriff parts and sheriff stories that yeah. I know, and I've and I, dabble in a lot of the Clark County history of some of the badder things that have happened. But also, you know, in my tenure as sheriff and with the department, and that's one thing. And then all of the forgotten history, like the Crandles and the yeah. Shibutas and Enterprises and Stonewalls and Quitman's, all that stuff, uh, I still got a lot of it bottled up that so I, I, have to I need this. to get out. Because I've passed, uh, you know, on the interstate, you see it, and I've pulled off road. DeSoto, what went on in DeSoto? I see the sign. What, what was DeSoto the DeSoto was a booming town at one time. Uh, South Equipment, it was a booming town. It was a hotel, depot, and everything there along the GMO Railroad. Uh, there's a story where in 1891, this guy in out Choctaw County, Alabama, which borders Clark County, uh, by the name of Bob Sims, and Sims went on the tear over there, and the law got to looking for him, and there was a story where 12 U.S. Marshals boarded a train in Mobile, unloaded at DeSoto, and they were well armed with Winchesters and carbines and a 1,000 rounds of ammunition. So yeah, that's kind of serious. I, that was pretty serious. <laughs> yeah. So they went into Choctaw County by horseback, and... There's a bunch of stories within that story I itself. Bet. And anyway, they were able to capture Sims, and he met his demise in a big oak tree over there somewhere. That did happen <laughs> back in the day. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, a thousand. Oh, boy, that's but, serious for everybody to come there. Yeah. But uh, a lot of those towns, you know, along the GMO Railroad, you know, there's a place called Alligator between Quitman and Stonewall. I never heard of Alligator? Alligator. Do you know about that? Oh, no. And, and there was a post office there. It's along the GMO Railroad. So a lot of forgotten places uh, that people that don't even have any knowledge about uh, in Clark County. And I'm sure that same way in Lauderdale and uh, in the other counties. Alligator, Mississippi. Didn't know Alligator, about that. Mississippi. Did you hear? Did you see this right here? So we didn't sit down and and talk about all right this is what we're going to talk about do your homework and get your stuff. Know what we're and he's know spitting about. out names and dates and this and that i mean he's got all this you know up here so yeah sheriff we'd love to <laughs> get a book from from some of that stuff you got in your noggin hmm. well i'd have to change the names on some of them because some of them <laughs> to, still alive protect the innocent <laughs> is that how they say that <laughs> yeah. some of the names have been some changed. of them is to protect the guilty <laughs> That's true, too. <laughs> oh, Hewitt Clark didn't change a name. No, he? Hewitt didn't. <laughs> he kept it right on there. Yeah. We'll be right back. More coming up with the sheriff as we move along on this early Thursday morning. If you have got a birthday and an anniversary, make sure to get that to us. We'll check those next and talk about what we're going to give away later. That's up and coming. Call Trey Long with Long Cleaning Solutions. 601-934-9427. Step into the spotless world of Long Cleaning Solutions. Feel the power of our one-of-a-kind solution perfected by Trey Long. Don't delay. Get results today. Call Trey Long at Long Cleaning Solutions, 601-934-9427. Health Now is your locally owned medical equipment store. Every person's need is a little different, and they offer a little bit of supplies. They even have walkers, bath products, and oxygen. 
And the great thing about Health Now is they offer same-day service. They're open Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and on call 24-7. Health Now Medical Equipment, where we treat our patients like family. If every time the wind blows you get a little leery about a tree over your house, talk to my friends at Reed Tree Service. There's no reason to be worried about a tree crashing through your house. Mike Reed has years of experience dealing with trees. It can be as simple as having a limb removed or a tree that is just huge too close to your shop or house. It's not going to cost you anything to have Mike come out and give you an estimate. They're licensed and insured. Taking care of East Mississippi and West Alabama. Read Tree Service. Have tree, we'll travel. Welcome back. I'm your friend, Scott. First, before we go into the birthdays, I think we, we got to go to Martin. You, you, you never know what's going to happen in Martin, Mississippi. Well, we actually happen to have video footage to capture that moment in history of what went on yeah. yesterday. Let's go ahead and pull this up here, Odie. This is uh, right here. We're close to the fire department. Look in your left screen about right here of what's coming. Here she comes. Boogie there, boogie there. Here comes. What's that in the way? Ooh. Oh, that's a light pole. Ooh, that hurt. At least it was the small one. <laughs> Rump row. Yeah. The driver would leave the scene and then show back up here in just a little bit. Uh, deputies were involved in that little situation there. Nothing like losing uh, your car to a light pole. That that had to hurt. It really did. Oh, you know it did. A few of the things yeah. that uh, that went on throughout the day yesterday. What else was it? We had a. Uh, where was it that I, I wanted to say good morning because if no one really realizes what goes on behind the scenes of when you've got an emergency, you pick up the phone, you dial 911 or the sheriff's department, it goes to a group of people each county. We wanted to say a big thank you to Lauderdale County as our, you would call this the 911 office. Uh, yeah, our dispatch. Word, dispatch. Uh, they're the most unsung heroes in emergency yes. services. Yes, because they are. they're the first point of contact it uh, is. that anyone talks to. And they're the most unsung heroes out there. And, and of yep. course, as you and your deputies always went to it, they were telling you information to protect you once you got on the scene. Exactly right. They were like a partner in the car because of the radio communication. And, uh, I mean, every, most all the dispatchers and the deputies, police officers, whatever, it's like a partner in the car with that dispatcher. They know that that dispatcher's got their back. And uh means a lot when you're out there at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, you Ooh. out on a disturbance call by yourself. So... Uh, makes you appreciate them a whole lot. And this yes, is uh, this is Appreciation Week with that all over the country. And uh, remember to thank them. I, and most people don't even know who they are. They're like the, the ghost in the background, so to speak. They do yeah. a lot. And we appreciate them. They're stuck in a room all by themselves. and uh, they No are. cheeseburgers. Well, it's kind of like correctional officers also. Oh, you know, yeah. those people deal with the worst society has to offer on a daily basis. And they're, yep. they are very underpaid. They're very underappreciated and uh, because they deal with the worst that, that yes, society has to offer, I'm telling in. you. Yeah, and been. I really appreciate them and what they've done for me over the years. And, and when you see one go in the cafe or you go see one go in the store, tell them you appreciate them. I like that. Yeah. That's a lot of truth to that. So we got a birthday? We, we want to bring up we, a few? We got a few of them. Uh, so we've got, uh, and I left this one off yesterday. Shame on I, you. I know it. I don't know how I got got through without doing this, and I apologize because Bethany Junkins turned 21 yesterday. Big day, big time, and I left it off. Uh, but today is her, I mean, yesterday was her 21st birthday. Well, we're going to celebrate it today. All right. Uh, Laney K. Hutton is seven. KC Strait is uh, having a birthday today. Patsy Green is having a birthday. Becky Tomlin celebrating 69 years here. Uh, Jeff Davis, 51. Lex Gullett, 69 years old today. Shirley Warren having a birthday today. And Wyatt Reed celebrating six years old. All right, get your birthday in touch. We'd love to have that. We'll give away a coffee mug a little bit later yeah. on uh, this morning. Make sure to do that. Todd, you've been, uh, you were sheriff as we were talking, 38 years old total? Yeah, with the sheriff department. Yeah, with one department. Yeah. It's a long time. It, ha have you missed it or have you had time to miss it yet? I probably hadn't had time to miss it. Uh, I miss the people I work with every day. Uh, but Even I, Barry? I, 
Yeah, I even miss old Barry White. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, old Barry, y'all keep burying your prayers. Y'all uh, already probably said that, but uh, I, there's nobody more dedicated to the people of Clark County than Barry White. That's he right. is. And, uh, yep. He is. Uh, he's top notch, and uh, he was good to me for a long time. He was one of my, my most dedicated employees. So uh, y'all keep old Barry in your prayers, uh, and um, keep keep him. Keep him straight, Scotty Ray. Oh, I'm going to do my best. <laughs> but as we say this, you know, you do this every day of your life, and then you retire. And, and it kind of probably has to feel like you're kind of on vacation at the moment, like you're going to wake up in a, in a few weeks and then go, oh, i got to go back to do this once again. Well, it is. and I, But I'll be honest with you, I've slept good for four months. <laughs> I, I really have. The phone hadn't rang, and uh, it's been very peaceful at my house uh, that the, the phone hadn't rang. I miss the people at the, at the office, and I miss interacting with the general public. Uh, but you know when it comes to time, uh, it's, it's time, time to, to go. On. It's time yeah. to move on. And um, <clears throat> I, I really... Uh, hadn't missed it. I, I'm just going to be honest. I really have not. <laughs> You're enjoying life. I, I really have. Uh, any, any plans to buy? You know, the people do this. Any plans to buy a Winnebago and hit the road? Well, I'm trying to build me a crawler hauler. A what? A crawler hauler. You might better explain that to He's me. He's a rock climber when a vehicle. Oh, oh, that's right. You do the but Jeep thing. We got a Jeep thing, you know, and, and my plans are is to take a gooseneck. About a 35, 36 foot camper and uh, trailer and set a camper on it, and then I can drive my Jeep on the back of it. He's got this going to be got some it engineering. Out. Yeah. Well, it, it can be done. Or somebody of mine have already done it. So <laughs> have you have you flipped one climbing rocks yet? I have. Okay. I in in I... Arkansas, and that was not a good experience. <laughs> not a good experience. No. You learn yeah. from those times. I watch you this do. stuff on YouTube of people that do that, and you know it's just like this and. Well, I had a catastrophic failure, and it was nothing that I did that I don't think, but uh, <laughs> Universal Joint broke, Ooh. and I'm on the side of a hill, and we slide back down the hill, and I got three pedals down, and I got two feet. <laughs> that's all you can do. <laughs> and that's all I can do. And it rolled over uh, one and a half. Granddaughter's in there, and wife is in there, and um, thank goodness nobody was seriously injured. Banged you up yeah. a little bit, but all banged us up a little bit. But that was over in Arkansas. Yeah. Ooh, and I, I've never, never done that whatsoever. There. So do you miss the the when you hear the blue lights? Do you have that urge to? to oh, jump I still, and go? yeah, I still <laughs> perk up a little bit when I see the the siren and I hear see the blue lights. <laughs> so unless they're behind me, you know. I, <laughs> I was in the town of Mabin the other day. And that's up out from Starkville. Yeah. And I got stopped by Octavia Hall County Deputy Sheriff. Uh, what did he have to say to you? He said, do you know why I stopped you? I said, no, sir. He said, you didn't have your seatbelt on. I said, well, you're not going to believe this, <laughs> but I'm going to the bathroom in that service station right there, and I just took it off. <laughs> he said, yeah, I've heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be different on that. Y'all stay with us. We're going to be right back. We're going to test Todd's uh, memory here. We're going to do some uh, down memory yeah. lane. All that's all the way here as we get your day underway. Mo, dig, haul, trench. The reliable Kubota BX Series subcompact tractor is highly capable. A smooth hydrostatic transmission makes for easy operation and versatile attachments that help you handle the job. The Kubota BX Series, rated number one in durability and owner experience. Talk to your Kubota dealer to schedule a demo. Patrick Allen Companies has a wide selection of garage doors that will fit your style, add value to your home, and add curb appeal to your neighborhood. Patrick Allen also has top-of-the-line energy-efficient replacement windows that will make your home look great while saving you money. We're family-owned and operated, and we take pride in our work. 5305 Highway 145 South in Meridian. For all your garage doors and replacement windows, call Patrick Allen Companies. Safety, service, Satisfaction. J&J Tire Muffler, located at 3428th Street, invites you by. And if you need a front-end alignment, make sure to try their new state-of-the-art alignment machine. No matter the size of your truck and car, J&J can align it. J&J also has touch-free mining, laser wheel balancing, and as always, they provide preventive maintenance, including CV axles, shocks, struts, brakes, with the largest selection of new and used tires, along with exhaust systems. Locally owned and operated since 1978 in Meridian. 
Welcome back. Your friend Scott Gray, along with Odie and our special guest, Sheriff Todd Kemp, and you'll forever have that name. I can't help it. That's what you're going to be. <laughs> yeah. It's just one of those things that, that happens there. And, of course, hand it over the, uh, the torch there to Anthony. How, how do you grade him on a scale of one to five? How's he doing oh, so far? Oh, he's probably right around a four right now. He, he hasn't quite got to a five, but he's getting there. He's learning. He's learning. <laughs> he's still new. And, you know, there's, there, there's things in jobs that it doesn't matter how many times somebody tells you until you actually do it, it, it just can't be explained, can That's it? That's exactly yeah. right. That's it. Like, I, I remember in 2000 when I took over the first two months, I was scared to death because I always had somebody, the sheriff, to lean on. You know? yeah. And then all of a sudden I sat down in that chair that day and the buck stops with me. All right. It, yeah. Let me ask this all at one time because we were somewhere one afternoon. Y'all had three major accidents at one what is the most amount of things at one time that it was like uh, bumblebees hitting you what what's the biggest thing that you could remember happened all at one time and you're trying to put fires out here and there probably during a major storm like a katrina or a you know i, I, in, I remember in 1995 we had back-to-back hurricanes come yeah. through oh yeah. aaron and opal and we had a shooting right in the middle of it Ooh. Trying to get to the southwest part of the county from Quitman during a hurricane <clears throat> to disarm a guy down there who's got a gun to somebody's head. I mean, that's that was probably one of the most harrowing things that I, would I, think. I dealt with, <clears throat> just trying to get there. And yeah. then, then have to deal with that when you got there. But there's been numerous things that's went on over the years, man. I could just... Go on. I need to on. write a book. That's what that book's going to be for. You, you can that. buy it when it comes out. You know, everybody's got somebody in the community that runs their mouth, that, well, spreads the word. Well, when it all first started out, it was 1775 in the U.S. of A. And they had to pick somebody to tell everybody. Yeah. And what was his message? The, the British, British are, are coming. coming. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Grab that horse. It was one if by land, two if by sea, and... What was the that last part of that three? Wasn't it? Wasn't it three? The lantern, uh, you know, that was supposed to be held up? One and two. One and two. One yeah. And, yeah. yeah. I, I had to go back and read that. That's been a one little while. One if by land and two if by sea. And three if they don't come. Maybe maybe that's where I got that from. We'll leave that No, alone. if it was, they didn't come, wouldn't nobody go riding? I remember this scene. I think this was in uh, uh, Bullet, the, this, this street. But we'll go back to 1906 when they had an earthquake in San Francisco. This street just looks so familiar. The town was shook by an earthquake. Isn't that one of those scenes where a bullet jumped over the hill? Probably is. Yeah. I'm, that's a, that's that a famous and the earthquake street. and then the fire followed. Yes. Right after. Oh, you know, Meridian yeah. had that big fire. I mean, uh, well, they had a fire after the tornado that came through in 1906. 1906, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, y'all got some good memories Down here. Down Front Street, wasn't it? Down Front Street, yes, sir. This guy was in a lot of other movies. Uh, his, his big claim to fame would be McHale's Navy. That was one of them. But he had cameo appearances in tons of other TV shows. Bob Hastings. Anybody remember his face? Because his name, you're probably not. No, I don't remember his you, name. You, you he, did I remember he play his in face. Mr. Ed, the horse? No, that wasn't him. No, it wasn't him. But he, he did play like cameos and... Yeah. Colombo and all those type things there. Not a not a big major star. This next guy, if you're a Western and you like to sit down on You'll Saturday afternoon, anybody remember the Virginian? Oh, Drury. That was his James name, James Drury. Drury. Born in 34. He, he played that part good. He did play that part. He played in a lot of uh, Western shows before he got his own to show. That. He played on Gunsmoke and uh, several more. I, I've seen him recently. <laughs> I've seen him recently. <laughs> so, you know, as we talk about these, everybody's got their favorite Western TV show. What was your favorite of all the Westerns that were out there? Probably Gunsmoke. I, I second I that. mean, I love the plot and the writing that was done uh, within the Gunsmoke series. I mean, they were just good, uh, good stories. You know, and, and, and the acting was just outstanding. Oh, James Arnaz yeah, fit yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, and of course, you know the rifleman was good. Bonanza was good. Have when, gun will trouble. That was good too. I liked old Paladin. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Not bad at all. There lived in California in a nice little hotel apartment, and then would go out to the. Oh, we almost forgot Maverick. Mm. Maverick. Maverick yeah. was good. Yeah. Yeah, a real good one there through the years. As we go back to 1947, a guy named James Wood. I know you know his face. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's before and after. As this happens to every one of you, if you oh, watch yeah, no right doubt. now, going. Yeah, yeah, he's a big political activist. He, yeah, he, uh, sure he doesn't is. mind speaking his 
peace. <laughs> no, he don't. That was a nice politically way to put it there, Sheriff. <laughs> What else went on today? <clears throat> we would see this guy. I think the first time I ever saw him was in Revenge of the Nerds. He had a few other parts, but <laughs> his big claim to fame would be, Honey, I shrunk the kids. Y'all remember that? He was in that one and uh, Little, Little House, House of Horrors. Horrors. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. That plant. That big old yeah. plant. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Feed me, Simo. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even, I forgot all about that. He was that yeah. little dude that lived he next door. He was the gatekeeper. Yeah. And yeah. Ghostbusters. <laughs> and believe it or not, that old girl was pretty at the time that lived down the hall from him. Shigourney Weaver. Yeah. yeah. That's who that was. This is probably the smartest man that ever breathed a breath of the U.S. of A. Yeah. He would pass away on this date after inventing this and that and the other, and everybody refers to him to this day. Mm. Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein. Passed away. Yeah. Now, we didn't say anything about his hair, do we? It, e equals MC squared. If you come up with all that stuff, you can wear your hair any way you I want I think to. he stuck his finger in the light socket too many <laughs> Yeah, he times did, didn't he? Yeah. This guy, I, I, for the longest, I didn't realize who his sister was. Did you realize that? Yeah, it's a pretty woman. Pretty woman. Eric Roberts has a birthday today. Born in 56. Okay. And Julia is Julia, his Julia, that's it. And they were sister. from Atlanta, weren't they? I believe you're right. Yeah. I can't name all the movies he's been in. Most of the cameos is what he's done. Nothing of a big major role like, you know. You know. No, he didn't have his own yeah. movie. Oh, oh, this fella here, you know he wears a man bun. He's got several. He, he, a talk show host of, I don't know, he, he just never turned me on. I never, I couldn't watch his show, I'll be honest about it. Conan O'Brien has a birthday today. Yeah, you can did. see the eight layers of makeup just on that picture. Because he is ugly. That was not nice there, Odie. Well, Say you're I mean, sorry. You can't help it. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. <laughs> but he, he definitely. <laughs> oh. he was... Conan. Conan. <laughs> and, and was, somebody lost their job this week that done a night show. And I mean, was it Fallon or somebody like that? that got... Jimmy Fallon? Maybe it was one of them. I, I didn't watch it either, but I don't think anybody else did. No, Maybe that's why they go. It probably the ratings yeah. going away. Yeah. Oh, you, if you watch any of those nighttime shows on network TV, you'll wind up just mad at the world. You will. Yeah. I or mean, either you just, go get your participation. They don't have the same values it. that we do, especially people in the South. They just don't yeah. have yeah. the same values that we do. Uh, it, it, and and I have to. And y'all correct me if I'm wrong. Have to think that attributes to what's going on in the United States or what people watch as influencers. And when I say people that you look up to, used to if you were on television, had your own show, people looked up to you, and there was a standard that you were as in a sheriff. You that know? is correct. Yeah. And, and to what you see on there today is poison. It is. It's poison. You just you don't go out and say ugly words and. Well, Seven o'clock, you're supposed to watch with your kids a good show, a good movie, or something like that on regular TV. And now the opening scene is a sex scene. That's and you correct. want to know why we have teen pregnancies? Because we've thrown them in front of a, a TV to, for a TV to raise. Now that the TV's raised them, we're all ticked because of the way society's turned out. We've allowed it to happen. Paul Harvey warned y'all that it was coming. He did. He 1965, wasn't it? Go back to 1964, Johnny Cash. Of course, he was a bad boy. We can't. We have to do that. But he got saved and turned his life around. But he come out with a song today that went number one. Y'all remember Understand Your Man? Oh, well, tired of you bad mouthing. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the people go, well... <clears throat> Well, that's uh, that's a not. What do you call it? Uh, the feminist movement there. Of understand your man. They'll say it's not politically correct. Oh, nowadays. that uh, why me movement. Yeah, yeah. 1970. Charlie Pride had a number one today. Mm. Anybody going to San Antonio? It stayed at number one for quite a while there. Yeah. Charlie, as you mentioned, Sledge, Mississippi. There. As we go back, um, I'm trying to. Uh, she was she was very talented. And she would make it to a big movie later, but she had a... This oh, was yeah. pop back in yeah. the day. Have you ever been mellow? Mm. Anybody remember her? Yeah. Olivia and Grease. Yeah. What, was the, what was the other one? Please, Mr. Please, don't play B-17. Yeah, that, and she had that physical. Yeah, let's physical. get physical. Uh, it was kind of a crossover pop hit. Yeah. Huge in Grease. Yeah, it know? was. It yeah. was. Man. I never watched this, but I've heard of her. 
Uh, anybody remember uh, an actress, Sabrina the Teenage Witch? Y'all remember that? Yeah. Melissa Joan Hart has a birthday today. She, she was big during that. That yeah. just wasn't my... Know the name, but that's about it. I know you're going to know this as we go back to 1981. Alabama would have a hit. And it was written by a guy from Mississippi. You're standing in a, in a room and you look over and you, you notice your girlfriend staring at somebody else. You go, something, something's going on there. Uh, do you and know was, him? Well, yeah, it was Old Flame. Old Flame. And Mac McAnally co-wrote that song. Really? really? Yeah. And uh, it just really has a lot of meaning. Because you can visualize where that song come from all through it. Those boys had it going on at one time. He did. I tell you, now they they good stuff. Anybody remember a song called Kids of the Baby Boom? I do. The Bellamy Brothers. The Bellamy Brothers. Just heard it yesterday, I believe. Yeah. Took it to number one on this day yeah. back in 87. I can't believe it's been that long ago. And now, this guy, I've met a lot of people in, in my tenure in radio and, and this person, that person at parties who think there's somebody. This guy is as laid back as you and I, <laughs> a handshake, and good as gold. He would show up driving a yellow Toyota. It was a hunk of junk. And he was trying to promote himself to make a living. Uh, he's got a farm, still works it. And there's one thing about him. He believes in God Almighty and wants everybody to know it. A little guy named Aaron Tippin. Y'all remember him? I do, yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with the radio. That was his first hit. He had a hit yeah. with it today. And I can't remember the name of the car, but that little old yellow Toyota, he had a name for it. Where, he just <laughs> where, was, he, where was he from? I, I don't remember. He's got a place outside of Nashville. Okay. Now, yeah. but I, I don't remember. Daisy, that was the car, if I remember right. Daisy. Daisy. But boy, that's been a long time ago. <clears throat> and what was interesting about Aaron Tippin, you had all these other stars that were selling millions across. He had the, during his time, during the South, he sold no uh, more albums than anybody. You might have had somebody else selling nationwide, but no one he sold more. He was a common more. man. Yeah. Common, common man. man. Yeah. Working man's PhD. That's right. I got it honest. Right. And it, it spoke to the working man. Uh, anybody remember this guy? He was on uh, NBC had, years ago, had a TV show called Real People. Do y'all remember that? No. It was back when we had one channel. His name was I, Skip Stevenson. I turned it Do off. Do remember that? <laughs> I don't remember okay, that. Okay, we'll, we'll take that out for next year since nobody knew him. <laughs> but me. That's gone. Whoop. Did he play on My Three Sons? It may have been. Hmm. Now that you did. say that, he did look familiar. Hmm. A little bit with it. Huh. Let's go back to 98, Jody Messina, a redhead. Y'all remember her? Oh, yeah. She had a number yeah. one today called Bye Bye. She's tough, let me tell you. <laughs> I met her personally. Yeah. <laughs> Don't give her no lip. <laughs> <laughs> we would lose one of uh, America's icons. Uh, he would wow. start out with bandstand and introduce you to people that you'd know forever. And then each year, that ball dropped. And, well, we lost Dick, Dick Clark. Dick Clark. 2012, uh, just uh, a famous guy. What a voice! I watched an episode of Adam Twelve the other night, and he was on there. He had a part. I had no clue. He had a part on the acting on the I'm run right. a drag strip of all things. <laughs> 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 we go back. This is as we wind down some things that went on in history today. It was 2020, and I didn't think this would happen, but it was huge. Fox News got sued, and they right before the trial gets started, they settle out of court. You remember all that talking about those voting booths? They the settled voting machines. Oh yeah, seven hundred eighty-seven million dollars. They settled. Ooh. Now imagine what it was going to be if they went to court. Ooh. <sighs> Mike Lindell still hadn't mm. dug his way out of that one, Ooh, no, but he, he refuses to give in. He still sticks yeah. to. I'm sticking to my guns. Well, I, now, but it, I don't I'm know. There you, was some video out there of people. But it couldn't be proved. Doing it, but it couldn't be proved. So. Yeah, I mean, and it cost his business. He was thrown out of store after store after store. He's and almost it, on online sales only now. Yeah, it, uh, it's sure. become that. Hmm. More. Aaron Tippin is born in Pensacola. Didn't know that. Pensacola. That's uh, not all that far off from here. No, it's not. But uh, a man among men in my book. I'm, yeah. Y'all, I'm, I'm telling you. Um, have you ever heard a song that he done, God's Not Through With Me Yet? I don't guess well, I have. You need to hear that one. Uh, and he wrote a song about his dad. Uh, it'll come to me just a second. One of the most touching things, because it's, it's real Christian yeah. based of what his father believed in, and it made him what he was. It, it's a hit, and no one ever heard it. That's what's bad. Mm. The My man's good. Goodness. We'll be right back. 
We know you care. But if this is all too real for you and your loved ones, make the call. Because we care too. Home instead. To us, it's personal. The selection is always changing at Massey Supermart Auto Sales with low mileage cars and trucks. How about a 2022 Jeep Wrangler or a 2021 Honda Ridgeline Sport with only 40,000 miles? A GMC Denali or a 2024 Silverado 2500? Drop in today and find the car that you're looking for. They're packed with low mileage cars and trucks. The low profit dealer, Massey Supermart. For something as vital as your eyes, you should have your lenses and contacts made with the utmost care and precision. And that's what Grayson Optical does on 24th Avenue. Since 1996, Grayson Optical's mission has been to provide Meridian and surrounding areas with quality eye care products. That's why we're locally owned and operated. And don't forget, custom-made sunglasses like Costa for your eyes only. When you need to see clearly, Grayson Optical. 2021 24th Avenue, Meridian. 601-693-6374. Meridian's favorite barbecue is Squealer's Barbecue, named the barbecue capital for the state of Mississippi. Whether it's barbecue, wings, or burgers, Squealer's simply has the best for a family environment. Every Thursday night, there's live music out on the porch. Takeout orders are welcome, and whether it's your next tailgate or large catering event, your friends at Squealer's are there to help. Drop in for lunch today or a night out on the town. Squealer's Barbecue, the best in fine barbecue. We just got word that Brick Gully and the Water Moccasins will be performing tonight at Squealers. So if you want some great music tonight, country, Ooh. watch him stand on a table and do a slide guitar. Come down and see Brit. He'll be taking the stage. Yeah. I think somewhere around 6 tonight. And get you some good food. I had some barbecue mm. there yesterday. It was great. I'm telling you. Teresa come by Hit and spoke to me. Good people right here in our community. We had another little fender bender yesterday. Yeah, we block traffic there. Uh, Texas turnaround as we go here to take a look at this. Mississippi Highway Patrol just happened to be passing by about the time the incident happened there. As you'll look at this, Marine Police Department showed up. Whew. Fender bender. We had several cars damaged there. Uh, no major injuries, but it, there, it's always kind of scary there. And then I was out and about a little bit later on, and I was on the other side of town, and I ran up on this. Right in front of the bank there. Ooh. Poor Tahoe got a new design. Ow. Well, it's like that Texas turnaround. There's eight roads that come into one. And they all come from different directions, and there ain't a stop sign there. <laughs> the most confusing Ooh. thing. The best in thing to do is when you get in, it's hammer on <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> but if you're trying to get on I-20 uh, by the Queen City truck stop, that has to be the most confusing intersection in this town. Everybody stops except the one coming across all the lanes yeah. of traffic. <laughs> Who designed that? I have no idea. He comes idea. out from under the bridge and he wants to get on the frontage road. He shoots away all the way across those lanes. I mean, I agree. I don't know who designed uh, that. Somebody had to be drinking, y'all. He wasn't, oh, he wasn't rocket oh, scientist, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Every time, whether I have to stop or not, I stop there because I don't know what's going on. Oh, I'm going to make sure nobody else is It's doing. like a big game of chicken getting on I-20. <laughs> yeah. That's the opposite ends of Meridian there. You got the Texas turnaround on one end and the Queen City at the other end. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot that Sounds happens like racing there. at Talladega. You better yeah. hold your line. You <laughs> <laughs> Go with it all. So what do we got to see out of that? Give us a timeline on this book. That Have you written it yet? No, but I've, I've got some notes. Uh, but I, <laughs> I'll probably... The first one will probably come out sometime later. Oh, so now we're hearing this supposed to be later a this set. Year. Well, there's so much... One book. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you got all this sheriffing stuff, you know, yeah. and crime stuff that will be in one, and then the historical stuff on the other. And, and there'll be some combinations of it all mixed in together. So What we're going to have to start doing is, you know, as CNN always have their special analysts analyzing the situation. From now on, Todd is our go-to person to give us yeah. his take. Like when we were down there when we had the standoff. Todd, what would you do if you were in this situation? Did, <laughs> did you happen to watch that the other night? I did. I did. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have our commentary. So, and, and everybody so has their opinion. Point? But, yeah, he's been promoted. He just didn't know it. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Yeah. So be ready for that. Uh, 
It's been a pleasure having you in. Keith, you come up here and join the sheriff sitting next to him. Y'all got this room for both of y'all okay. there. Yeah, we can make it through. One. Yeah. Now, Sheriff, are you going to use uh, names like Ledbetter when it comes to hide the uh, true identity of some of the people? Probably. The <laughs> Probably. You, you may be the closest thing to Jerry Clower that we got left in this world. Oh, my goodness. Well, people don't realize a lot of those stories kind of come from Clark County, didn't they? Well, they did. <laughs> Clower. You know, so fertilized. You know, he spread yeah. a lot of fertilized too. But, <laughs> but he would go around to different barber shops and all, and he picked up a lot of these these stories from the East Mississippi area. Yeah, and a lot of people don't know that. And he incorporated it into his Ledbetter family and all of that. So. You, do y'all remember the story to where he brought in the guy from the the record company to his farm and? And he jumped out and go show him shot in the air or something. At a, at shot a, Uncle versus <laughs> Mew. <laughs> Old Bella. I got the cow. <laughs> and he ended up like killing three Three cows. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was just good, clean humor that you cannot get anywhere this day and time. Well, the, the beer joint story was allegedly happened down at Rock Hill. Now, well, since you brought it up, what was what was the joke that Jerry told us so we'll understand it? Do you remember how it went? It was Marcel in the beer joint. Was the, the he stuck the McCullough? Up. That's where he stuck the McCullough. And, and, yeah. But anyway, it was a guy from allegedly from Clark County. <laughs> he unloaded his paper wood truck behind Sear and Roebuck on 22nd Avenue. Remember when? Yeah, he, I do yeah, remember that. There was a wood yard there. Well, he's going to head back south on 45, and he's hot. And he stinks. He's been cutting paper wood. And he stops at Rock Hill. And they won't let him in. Because he stinks. Because he stinks. <laughs> Nasty. Been hunting, cutting wood. And all he wanted was a beer. <laughs> so they told him, get out of that. So he goes to the truck. And he comes back. And in his words, the guy said it wasn't a McCullough. <laughs> <laughs> it was a homolite. <laughs> <laughs> he called it a homolite. <laughs> <laughs> and he got served, and I said, I told him, I said, well, his name was Joe Bill. Yeah. I said, Joe Bill, I said, oh, Clower made a million dollars off of you, off of that beer joint store. He said, yeah, but he didn't do that time or pay that fine. <laughs> <laughs> so he got, he got into a little trouble. He over got a little trouble over the beer joint. <laughs> <laughs> and, and with always, and you know, you have to think back when Clower told the story of sitting up with the dead where they took the guy to the, the beer joint with him that was dead. Yeah. That had, somebody had to have done Somebody it. had to done this. Yeah. Joe Gully said it was my dad's first cousin. <laughs> <laughs> but Jerry, uh, mm. you know, God bless him. He was just uh, somebody to really look up to. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. I mean, and, and a, a great statesman for the state of Mississippi. And, uh, Ooh, you know, or we, women's rights. He, yeah. I mean, he was a... <laughs> Uh, he was a great spokesman for our state. And I'll never forget the, the story. And maybe y'all remember this one of where they went to Columbus, Mississippi to pick up the body in the hearse. Do y'all remember that one? <laughs> no, I don't remember. <laughs> and they, they start coming back from Columbus to Meridian. And they stop somewhere around Wahalik or Scuba to get something to eat. And there's two of them in the car. And one of them leaves. He said, I'm going to go outside and uh, wait for you. I'm going to have a smoke. So he goes out there and he says, "His old hobo sitting on the side of the road goes, look, man, I'm trying to get to Meridian. I got to catch a bus. And he said, there ain't nowhere in this car but with a dead man. He goes, I don't care. I got to get home. So he says, the other guy comes out of the restaurant, gets in the car, and they're driving down through there in that Cadillac floating with the moonlight on that hood emblem at 80 miles an hour. And a hand comes out from behind and says, is it okay to smoke back here? <laughs> he said, the guy jumped out of the car. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good, clean humor that most likely happened. That I guarantee yeah. you that happened. <laughs> Austin said, Clint, old Clower now called it. It was a Coca-Cola he was stopping to get. That's it because be. it was clean. Yeah. He right. didn't talk about people drinking beers and all that right. as much. He stopped to go get a Coca-Cola. <laughs> Oh, and I could just yeah. visualize that with through it. If you'll notice, we've got another picture here in the screen. Keith Dog, what in the world are you doing here? I'm just going to mention our pancake breakfast we're having Saturday morning. What y'all going to do and how you going to do it? Oh, we're going to start at 7 Saturday morning, go to 11. We're going to serve pancakes, sauces, and a drink. And, uh, it's all to raise money for the fire department out at Long Creek. Mm. Now, who's doing the cooking? You in charge this year? I'll be one of them, probably. So I'll tell you, Joe, old, old Joe Collins, he's probably going to be... Uh, 
doing a little bit of that cooking, but uh, man, what they do, and this is a major fundraiser for them. And they make, now believe me, you can tell that I hadn't pushed many dishes away. Uh, and one of the best pancake dinners there is is right here with uh, Long Creek. Cause they, I don't know what they do to them, but they got some good old pancakes. Now, I hate to say this, but there's going to be some folks that go to Long Creek. How, how, how do I get there? Tell us how to get to Long yeah. Creek. An easy way to get down to access is to get you some pancakes, Sadie. Well, that's all I, the address is 4892 Zero Road. If you get off of 45 Cosville? there at Cosville, you take the first road to the right. It's down there about two Find and the half old miles. judge's store and hang a right and keep going until you see yeah, a group of people. Right, yeah, it's right there at the Long Creek Ball Field. If you go to the four way stop, you pass it. So you'll see you it. You can't pass it. There's <laughs> no way. Just type in Long Creek Ball Park. No, remind me of park. this. And I know it's coming up sometime this year, and I'm going to put you on the spot. I, me and Odie went there last year for a car show at some point, didn't yes. we? Well, we had one last June. We're going to have, we moved it this year to. It's going to be uh, November the 2nd. You're looking for a cooler day, aren't yeah, we Yeah, last year it was like 98 <laughs> degrees or something like that. So we cool it down a little, a little bit there. <laughs> so we're going to put that in our calendars. What time does all this get underway Saturday? At 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. We'll be there getting ready before till, the end. So we'll... Till 11, is that right? Yeah, about 11. You know, I, I mentioned earlier about unsung heroes. These volunteer firemen are some of the most unsung heroes also. Get up yeah. in the middle of the night, don't get paid one dime to go and, yeah. and fight a fire or work a wreck or something like that. Uh, people need to turn out and support these guys. And there's a, I think there's 15 in Clark County. I don't know how many in Lauderdale County and in other counties. but It's a know, heap, people, isn't it? But yeah. the, the people need to support their local volunteer fire department. You know, and I brought this up the other night. I was standing with the volunteer fire department at the wreck that happened on 19. Dark, can't see good, there's lights everywhere, and people don't slow down. And a loss of life can happen there of people trying to save someone else. It certainly can. You've seen it, I know. Well, the distracted driver will come by. They want to see the wreck and see what's going on at the scene, and they're not paying any attention to that pro fellow out there flagging traffic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, trying to slow things down. And you will get run over out there. Uh, I, it almost happened to me dozens of times over the years. I saw the brakes squalling and everybody running the other night. I thought, yep, I'm standing in the ditch over here way away from y'all. Get <laughs> the hell out over there. And I hate to say it, but the rubbernecker out there uh, oh, yeah. it happens, won't see it? Yep. what's going on. They're not paying any attention to what, what's in the roadway in front of them. What mm -hmm. they should be looking at. Right. It's yeah. already coming up at the top of the hour. Y'all hang on. We're coming back. We're going to give away a coffee mug. It's uh, right around the corner. We'll be right back. Bring on the amazing colors of spring. Al's Garden and Gift, voted the best garden and gift shop, specializes in beautiful bedding and vegetable plants, shrubs, fruit trees, hanging baskets, succulents, roses, and ferns. Freshen up flower beds with mulches, soils, sod, and pine straw. Also sprouting up unique gifts, candles, pottery, gourmet sauces, spices, and food items. Come try a cool and delicious treat by Ice Cream Factory, too. It's the perfect time to spend in the yard. Bloom with happiness. Visit Al's Garden and Gift today. Downtown Meridian is thriving with a fresh look, and now it's getting a new neighbor. Toyota Meridian is now open under new hometown leadership. We're bringing automotive knowledge and experience home with a focus on improved customer satisfaction and all new pricing. Toyota Meridian is excited to serve the Queen City and exceed your expectations. I'm Trenard Rush, and I want to invite you to Toyota Meridian, where hometown pride drives excellence. Our local headlines are brought to you by the Rock House Gun and Pawn. Philadelphia Gun and Pawn, located at 910 Posey Avenue, has tons of lawnmowers to choose from. A big selection of zero-turn lawnmowers, power washers, and even barbecue grills. Step inside the store and see their complete line of Liberty safes along with those Browning safes. A large selection of Louis Vuitton purses along with satin shirts and bead sets and tons to choose from for the outdoorsman in your household. And always a great deal on any type of jewelry you're looking for. And a private lobby for pawns for your confidentiality. Philadelphia Gun and Pawn. I'm going to ask the professional, since we were just talking about being out and trafficking, all, our, our friends at Clark County Hot Topics posted that the Sheriff's Department in Clark County just got a few things donated to them. And I've never heard of it. A Guardian Light, are you familiar with that? I, I've heard of it. I, I think it was big in the fire service. Oh, yeah, you, know, you might have more familiar with, but I've heard of them. Uh, put them on their vest or something if they're going into a, a situation. And it it blinks. I, I take it. That's oh, it is. Yeah, you stick it on your shoulder, and uh, I you, think you they can, do have some that are audible. 
also known to Odie. For the fire, we do. Yeah. Uh, it's more audible than it is lights, but especially a lot of these became real big when you're doing some searches or out through the woods because you can see them. That's correct. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, that makes sense. You know, especially with a drone and they do some invisible light where a drone can see you, but. It's also Nobody called else. the husband locator. Don't think for a minute she ain't got a tracker on you. Hey, you're right. <laughs> you got it. You got it. <laughs> it's but, been a, a big morning. We need to update some birthdays. Uh, we had we got new... yeah. We had Abraham Portis is celebrating seventy five years. So happy birthday to him. He's the last one that we got in for the. For the drawing for the Hyundai of Meridian Scotty Ray Report coffee mug. As you and, get that uh, set up, I'll remind you, but last yeah. night we had another one of those incidents right there. It's right down from Walmart, 2nd Street South. You know where that four-way is there? Yeah. Car nosedived off in the ditch there all by itself there. MPD and a few others with the fire department showed up to help them out and get them back on the road there. So one of the things that went on after dark last night. What we got, Odie? We ready for this? Yeah, we ready for this one right here. And let's see what we got. Uh, number three, Casey Strait. Happy birthday. Winner of today's coffee mug. All you got to do is go by Hyundai or Meridian Highway 39 North. Big gray building across from Coca-Cola. And uh, pick it up. Uh, we can't say uh, enough. Keith, thank you for coming in telling us about that. Sheriff? Yes, sir. Uh, we need we need to know more about the book as this gets near this. We'll we'll keep you informed. All right, it's coming. It's we will. coming. It's coming. So yeah. uh, it's been a pleasure having you with us. It's been a pleasure being here. You got to Always you got to come back when we can uh, spend a little bit more time in depth on yeah. some more stories. We and we're gonna do, do that. We might have to have just a Todd special. Oh no! No. <laughs> <laughs> when he gets that first book written. All right, we need a uh, a Bible verse to head us out to face Ooh. today's. Whatever happens to us. What, what's our verse for today, Odie? So, uh, for today, we're going to go to Acts chapter 20, verse 35. And everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Whew, I tell Amen. you what, that, that's some powerful stuff right there. And uh, just like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is powerful. Amen. And uh, he'd come into our hearts and forgive us of everything we've done and give us everlasting life along with a blessed life we have here on earth. Can't do it without him. He loves you. Go talk to him. He's available 24 days, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All you got to do is just talk, and there he is. We love you just like Jesus does, and we'll be back in about 23 hours to bring you some more local news. Until then, have a great day. The Scotty Ray Report is brought to you by our following partners.